things OCD people hate. This is way too relatable. All right, my desk is perfectly organized and... What are you doing? So let me get this straight. We all have OCD if we've ever been annoyed with our siblings? Thanks, TikTok. Now I can use this info to add even more mental illnesses to my Pokedex. What's shaking? How have you been? I'm so sorry I've been gone for so long, leaving you all to fend for yourselves in the dark world of TikTok. But I'm back and better than ever, here to ease us back into the cringe together as a team. And can I just say what a team we've become? I can't believe I hit 50k two weeks ago. I was literally celebrating 1k at the end of July. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me. I'm so proud to call you all my Girl Scouts, and the art you've made of me and my kitten Ridley is just absolutely unbelievable. Please, keep it up. I love seeing all the talent and you guys seriously brighten my day with them. Even in my absence, I've been keeping an eye on things, reading your comments and trying to keep in touch on Discord, but to finally be back on my grind honestly just rocks. I'm actually kind of excited to pop back into the fake disorder cringe subreddit to see what I've missed if you can even believe that. Alright, alright, I've been gone long enough, so let's just stop with my droning on and just get to what you're here to see, shall we? All right, y'all, listen, here's some food for thought, okay? So I've been talking to my therapist about this because I do not resonate with the name dissociative identity disorder. To us, that feels like you are telling us that we are just associating and it is an outer body experience and you are not literally like understanding that there's multiples of us in our head, right? We also don't agree with multiple personality disorder because personality is a trait and we're not a trait, you know? We're a multiplicity of us in one body. So we've decided as a system from now on, we identify, okay, as multiple identity disorder. And if you also have DID and you wanna drop in your thought process on this, let us know. But that's pretty much for us. It feels like we're finally saying, yes, we are a multiplicity. Yes, we are different identities. And yes, we have a disorder. But we're still perfect just the way we are. And we are a group of us and we are not a personality trait or just dissociating. In case you didn't know, shouting something in the most obnoxious voice possible makes it true and the louder a person is, the more smart their argument is. And judging by the annoying, I'm so cute tone of yelling this gal puts us through, you just have to believe her, even if you don't resonate with what she's saying. Seriously, the sheer amount of made-up terms and words in her ramble gave me an outer body experience. Someone needs to tell this girl that it doesn't matter how she feels about the term DID, if she fits the criteria and has been diagnosed, and let's just give her the benefit of the doubt and say that she has it. It's just some words. Words that define a set of diagnostic criteria in order to know how to best treat her. You don't have to label yourself with that term because it's not a life sentence. You can be diagnosed with something and not make your life revolve around it. It's just there to know what kind of therapies help manage the symptoms associated with it. And can we just talk about how wrongly she talks about dissociation for a second? The whole point of DID is that the child endures such bad trauma that the brain dissociates in order to bring the child away from the trauma in order to protect them since they cannot cope with it. You literally cannot have DID without dissociating because that is what happens when a person switches. It is an out-of-body experience because the brain knows it won't be able to function normally. It splits to avoid repeated trauma based on past patterns found in memory because otherwise the person literally wouldn't be able to function without having intense breakdowns from the lightest trigger in their memories. I'm sorry you don't like that it's not just different OCs living in your head using your body as an HQ to take shifts controlling your limbs, but unfortunately, reality isn't as fun as what the DID fakers like to fantasize about. Although, multiple identity disorder makes sense when you think about it, because all these fakers seem to love coming up with different random traits to identify as and making these disorders or labels a bigger deal than they need to be. Almost like they want it to be the star of their boring lives? Seems to me like this person's therapist hasn't been able to tread the fine line of validating their feelings while not enabling their antics. Makes me wonder how much power the individual has in forcing professionals to diagnose them with whatever ailment they've decided is cool. I'm curious to see just how many of these kids were the ones who approached their therapist with the disorder they want, rather than being diagnosed out of nowhere. Well, I was at the gym, my eating disorder definitely changed from eat air and starve yourself to let's binge. So we're going to taco bell. I got this crazy idea that I can totally stick a whole taco in my mouth, so we're gonna see. The answer is no. I Is this the same girl? 
I'm starting to not be able to tell who's who, since they're all young girls who do one of two things. Yell at the camera while doing over-the-top Disney animation expressions, or be angry, bitter, sulking while whispering threats to their haters so their parents don't overhear them in the other room. She's obviously the former, but that doesn't really narrow it down very much, does it? With that being said, the way she's portraying eating disorders is actually disgusting. Binging is something someone suffering does in secret. They'll go out of their way to hide the evidence of their binges, like driving to multiple places to buy food or throwing the wrappers out in a public space so their family doesn't find out. They feel shame and guilt, they hate themselves, and they would never let anyone know they were binging by making a TikTok about it, let alone filming themselves eating. Because most people suffering with some type of restrict binge cycle refuse to let others see them when they get that out of control. They find strength in not eating in defeat and letting that urge take over. It's heartbreaking and astonishing how hard people who suffer with binges try to hide it. Take that from a recovered ED sufferer. The only exceptions I could think of is if you were one of those mukbang YouTubers who let the money control them rather than the food. You know the ones. But as far as I can tell, filming a TikTok challenge of you trying to fit a whole taco in your mouth seems to be more of some cutesy attempt to be the Gen Z elite title of quirky rather than the next Nikocado Avocado. But correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> My heart is up. Have really bad paying attentionness abilities. Therefore, okay, color no, I'm just kidding. Okay, it's called Focus Focus, and they're these like focus gummies that I got, and I'm really excited to try these out. They're all organic. They're four hour energy, memory support, support, focus and concentration, improved cognitive performance. And what I really liked about it, I don't know where the information about it was. But it doesn't have any preservatives it's like super like healthy it doesn't have anything in it so it's a dietary supplement it says to take two yes two gummies oh that's really yummy oh i might take more than two honestly i took two uh four and we're gonna see how much work i get done i have a long list to do so wish me luck okay yeah it works my entire house is spotless okay i got everything on my list done it it's only been three hours. It hasn't even been, I, I forgot I was supposed to be filming. I did a phenomenal job. I spill, I was doing dishes. I spilled shit all over my, phenomenal, phenomenal. Y'all, if you can't pay attention to stuff, you need this. What is it called again? Calavita Cala Focus Focus? Bro, I wish I would have been doing this earlier. My room would have been so clean. Dude, I genuinely cannot tell if this is the same person. Each video is about a different mental illness, so I can't tell if they've got the full deck of cards in their hand or if this is just another one of the Gen Z kids. Either way, if this person thinks eating Sour Patch Kids is the key to curing their ADHD, I think they might have a case of the stupid. She's eating some glorified multivitamin that's not FDA approved, promoting it to her young followers as some cute snack to cure their mental disorder, and probably is getting some profit off of it. What's next? Is Jimmy the dealer gonna start making TikToks promoting his meth as a way to lose weight fast? Is Basil the hippie gonna start making shroom tea to cure depression? Seeing these crazy TikTok challenges over the last few months, I wouldn't be surprised if some influential teen started telling kids to snort wasabi as a cure to DID and people actually tried it. Scratch that. Why would those kids ever want to be cured? Then they wouldn't get attention anymore. If your doctor has diagnosed you with ADHD, it's them who will give you supplements and pills to help, not Christy the TikTok girl. I know some people want a quick fix, or even more disturbingly, want to be on prescription drugs to feel some sort of mental illness validation, but this shit is dangerous. You have no idea what's in this, and I hate that a platform full of confused kids are going to see this product made to target vulnerable people and try to get their hands on it. I'm not against natural supplements by any means. Hell, turmeric pills have saved my poor arthritic hands this past month. But anything that is marketed at helping people with mental illnesses and is not extensively studied or isn't recommended by medical professionals is not it, chief. If you can't cope with your symptoms, it's time to talk to a professional, not a TikToker. If you seriously think that these kids don't use their mental disorders as some sort of personality trait or identifying label, then think again. Someone found one of the people commonly posted about on this subreddit on Tinder, and their bio pretty much solidified the proof that they seriously believe that their illness defines them. DID is the second thing that they want complete strangers to know about them, not hobbies or interests. Just all of the most intimate things that no one needs to know about you unless they're actually interested in pursuing something with you. Imagine if we all just broadcasted the worst things about ourselves in our dating profiles first thing and gave no real indication of who we are as a person. Like, Grace, 23 and 11 twelfths, five head and a big toe that kinda hurts sometimes, self-diagnosed anxiety from the inexplicable toe pain, and loves gaming and making fun of TikTok. No fatties. 
I'd rather swipe on someone with three grainy pictures taken on the same night out and no bio to be honest with you. By all means, share your flaws with people and don't pretend to be someone you're not. But I stand by the idea of only letting people who deserve to become a part of your life know these things. Maybe wait until you've matched and talked for a bit and are planning to meet up? Other people not only couldn't give less of a fuck about your qualms when they don't even know you, but you have no idea how they could ever use that against you. Fakers, stigma, and bad people all contribute to negative outcomes, and it would be really awful to have the wrong person want to harm a complete stranger. That, and you'll definitely get more matches if you showcase your personality instead. Think, I play piano and collect vintage tees over Crippling depression and intrusive thoughts of murdering my stepmom. You feel me? And yeah, there are more of them out there that do this, so it's not an isolated incident. Okay, I said we'd ease back into it, but that seriously felt like we just dived back into some fake disorder infested waters. And now, Gen Z kids beckon us like sirens into catering to their delusions through the promise of acceptance and memes, but really plot to cancel us and redefine mental illness to suit their anime alter egos. All I can suggest to you is to keep on swimming past this bullshit and not to get pulled into the cesspool of toxicity that is faking mental disorders. Go touch some grass for those who are too far gone to do it themselves and remember that if you are genuinely suffering, these types of people invalidating your experience will either come to and realize their stupidity one day or will always be a shit person. And if it's the latter, we'll just keep rinsing them until we finally reach a point where real mental disorder sufferers are not stigmatized and fakers get cancelled in the way that they constantly try to do to others. Don't lose hope. I'm here rooting for you and speaking up for you. Anyways, that's all from me for today. Sorry I've been MIA for so long, but I'm gonna work really hard through my own personal things so that I can keep on doing these videos that I love so much. Be sure to follow me on my Insta, Twitch, and Twitter, and join my Discord, all linked below. I hope you all have an amazing day, and I shall see you all in the next video. Peace out, Girl Scouts. Thanks for watching.